experiences and that bonding and that socializing that we did, it made the movie and the love for what we were doing, I really hope, and I think it does, translate through and into the screen and to the audience itself. And you know, that's, that's, that's the reason we do what we do. All of you had to delve into being part of a family unit, whether surrogate with Riff and the Jets, Blood in Pop, Peter and Frank and uh, with father and son with Jesse and Johnny. What was the most interesting part of immersing yourself into those dynamics? For us as the Jets in this collective tribal unit um, and their home being torn apart and everything kind of being taken away from them or how they perceive that there is this change that is uncontrollable at this moment. And, uh, you know, this, this connection between Riff and Tony and the Jets in general of the inability to let go and, and accept what is happening and, and move forward. I mean, that's like the story, uh, the crux of it all. Um, and, in order for that, I think to have been, to have landed the way that it did, we were, like I said, we, we were really fortunate enough to have four or five months of rehearsal every single day together. And there were days that we didn't do anything. So, you know, we were just there. And those were the best days because we got to just socialize and get to know each other. And one of the, one of the things that I did with the Jets early, early on, we all went out and got a beer and I told them, what we're going to do this summer is every we're going to do this thing. And I called it jet activities where <laughs> everybody, everybody had to come up with some sort of activity and no matter what it was, we all had to do it. And, um, we did everything that summer, you know, we played laser tag. We went upstate with the sharks and we just bonded. And it was really important that time that we had of, either working our butts off and rehearsing or doing nothing. Uh, just that ability to um, get to know each other. And I'll tell a really quick story because I want everyone else to you know, talk about their experience as well. But there was a, a Jet whose father had passed away not too long ago and who had a history with West Side Story from other productions. He was a New York City ballet dancer and his father had passed away. And one of the first things that we shot for West Side was cool. And um, it was fourth day on set, we wrap the number and Harrison, uh, who was the jet, had actually brought his father's ashes. And as a way to kind of let go, uh, we were on the, in Brooklyn on the East River and he asked if we could sing the jet song and he released his father's ashes into the East River. And like, that's the kind of bond that we had, you know, and, and I remember telling Stephen because, you know, pandemic was going on. I said, you know, if no one ever sees this movie, truthfully, it really doesn't matter, at least to me, because those experiences and that bonding and that socializing that we did, it made the movie and the love for what we were doing, I really hope, and I think it does, translate through and into the screen and to the audience itself. And you know, that's, that's, that's the reason we do what we do. Ken uh, Branagh got us to, He's very clever, the, the four main adults in it, um, Judy Dench, Katrina Balfe, Jamie and myself, he, we sat around a table at distance and he just asked us all in about 15 minutes to tell all our own stories of our own childhood, uh, which would have been in different eras uh, way before. And so suddenly we realized we knew a lot about each other personally within about uh, 45 minutes. Uh, it wasn't about socializing, about getting to know people. We just opened up to each other. We talked about our siblings, about what we remembered as kids, uh, and all going on in different parts of the of the Great Britain or the Ireland and uh, at different times. And yet at the same time, we suddenly knew each other personally quite deeply. Uh, and that was what, uh, Ken, we wanted to use in the connection that they made, that we actually knew each other, not as characters or how you play the character and use the scenario was actually that we knew each other and immediately were very fond of each other because uh, we'd opened up so quickly. And I think that's the, half the battle is about opening up to each other and not being protective of your role or what you how you want to play it. It's about really trying to dig in and start, find the love between each other. And therefore, once you find the love, you can find where to hit the weak points and play with and uh, wind people up because you love them. Then there's no 
serious damage being done, but it's all part of the creative process. And I think Ken was able to create that very quickly. And then he threw young Jude Hill, that beautiful young boy into the mix. And then the fireworks went off. I feel a lot of the like bonding happened as the film went on. So we didn't really need to like get to know each other before the film happened. Because in the film, we didn't really know each other. We had met once when I was younger in the film and that was it. But bonding with um, Gabby was, um, we had one kind of chemistry test, but it was more of like an audition. And we talked about music. We talked about like just things that are very not work. And that was um, kind of how I really got the job, just seeing if I liked the uh, people and seeing if they liked me. With Come On, Come On, what made it um, quite like different to me was um, how much it was like a documentary, even in the scenes where it was scripted. We spent most of the time bonding when we were on camera because a lot of the film was like kind of improvised. We'd have the script and then we'd do whatever we wanted with the scene. We could tweak it if we wanted to. If that was something that we thought of on the spot, we could just say it. But it wasn't like fully improvised because we still had to do what the scene said for us to do. But a lot of that was like where we bonded and off camera, we um, were bond. But there was never like bonding sessions. It was always just we'd go into set and then we'd do it. Yes, absolutely. So I have to admit, I have so much respect. Uh, hats off to Amelia Jones. She is such a natural actor and she happens to have that innately inside her to be able to pick up a new language. And when they cast me and when I was attached, my first question was who would play Ruby? And I was worried about the deaf community's concerns, the politics, and of course the skill of sign language. And when we met her at rehearsals, we had two weeks of rehearsals before our first day of shooting. And we went out onto a fishing boat at three o'clock in the morning. And I met Amelia for the first time. And we socialized a bit and I was curious and I saw her signing a bit. And actually it made me feel so relieved. And when the actual fishermen showed us how to gut and cut open these fish, and of course it was gross, she, I wanted to see her reaction. She wasn't nervous. She was just tossing these guts overboard. And I asked her, "Were you? did you fish growing up? And she said, no, this is my first time. And I said, okay, me too. And so I was so impressed with Amelia. And, you know, most actors who are hearing, who learn sign language, they tend to be focused and concerned about only the lines in the script. But Amelia, she, when she was learned, learning sign language, she really wanted to make the extra effort to communicate with her deaf castmates. And we really were socializing on and offset. And so I was so, so impressed by her. And then I discovered that she was British and she had to deliver her lives in an American accent, which wasn't my problem being deaf. But other folks had told me that, hey, she's really skilled at this. So Amelia Jones has such a bright future and it was an honor working with her. Mine was somewhere in between Kieran's and Mike's. We didn't have the privilege of having five months, which I can't imagine that must have been amazing. And I wish I did see the behind the scenes of that. Um, and not as brave as having a couple of days, but but same experience in the sense that when I had met Kirsten, Benedict and, and Jesse, obviously um, Kirsten and, and, and Jesse are actually together, um, which, is, which is very cool to observe. Um, they met my expectations in, in the sense that I was just, I felt like I was just meeting grounded human beings, which is what you always, hope for um, individuals that are completely separate of their, their ego. And uh, so that, that makes it easy. You know, you just hit the ground running from there on. And I guess um, the, the main part of, of, of anything about our performances together and how they show on screen is uh, was that two weeks that we had with Jane. I call it the, the Jane boot camp um, where we just did the rounds with her and uh, again, was challenged by her in many different ways. Um, but also eased by her um, because, uh, you know, she had the reins and it's very easy to put your complete trust into her. It just felt like we were like playing and uh, she asked me to uplift 
Peter into the room and we just asked him questions and then we kind of makeshift played out scenes with Peter and Jane. And I feel like that holds enough. Uh, I feel like that holds enough of a test and a challenge for, for the actor, because you have to have enough of the subconscious there where you've filled in the gaps uh, for, for, for the things that are in the script and are not to, to prove that you're, you're in your character's shoes, I guess. Um, but also it doesn't restrict you to any kind of expectation or solidify you in like in, in the script as, as Troy's saying there. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a real gift to be able to play like that. I mean, you have to, because it's, it's like, you know, you, you, when in the script and on the black and white of the page of it all, there is all of this blank stuff in between. And if you are not embodying, um, or not the expert in what you are attempting to do, then quite frankly, you're failing. And so if you don't have the instincts like on command to bring something to it, then you're kind of, well, you're not acting in my opinion, you know, you're not doing it. You're not engaging with the material in a way of that give and take because you know, the writer is able to build this much, but you have to then do this, which then helps that. And it keeps going and going and going and everything feeds off of each other.